Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, the show that is part of the Simply Luxurious Life online destination. Visit the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com to find the show notes for each podcast episode, as well as much more weekly content to elevate your everyday and deepen your contentment. From recipes, motivational posts, videos of the cooking show series, style and decor inspiration, French and British inspired content, and the reader's favorite regular weekly post, This and That, which goes live on the blog every Friday. Now to today's episode. Welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 310th episode of The Simple Sophisticate, and welcome to a brand new conversation with provincial mystery writer living in Provence, M.L. Longworth. She joins us during French Week to share some very exciting news that you may know a little bit about, but I guarantee you don't know everything that she's going to share with us today. And I cannot wait to... well. I, I'm going I'm to give it away if I talk too much. I also just want to let you know that um, the previous episode that just aired on a Monday, the 9th of August, I called in the episode, that episode 310. It was 309. This is episode 310, the most recent episode, and I think you will enjoy it. Uh, Mary Lou is going to first share the exciting news with us, take us behind the scenes, give us some insider updates. And she's also going to tell us when her next book is released. So her ninth book is currently out. We talked about it on a recent Q&A this last April on the blog. And she has a 10th book coming out. She'll tell us when. And she's going to give us a detailed look at what the plot is all about. It sounds fantastic. It involves food and the theater. Speaking of food, she's going to share with us a couple of ideas for summer recipes, and I will be posting one of the recipes that at least it made me salivate. It may make you salivate. It is so simple to make. I've enjoyed it already at home. Highly recommend giving it a try. Slip away to Provence with me, won't you? We recorded this episode on July 12th, so about a month ago. Let's get to our conversation. Joining me today from Provence and returning to the show is mystery writer and friend of the podcast, M.L. Longworth. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you so much. (laughs) I'm so happy to have you during French week, our sixth annual French week. So I just want to dive right into just what is it like in France right now? What is life like with some of the regulations maybe being lifted? What is the vibe? It's, uh, It's busier and it's busier, definitely in downtown X, and in the even just in the villages um, around where I live, because I live south of X now. Um, it, there are more people out, more people in ca- even more people in cafes, and just walking, you know, w- walking around doing their errands and shopping, and I would, and they're locals, you know. I'm, I'm hearing French being spoken, and usually this time of the year, I'd hear you know, lots of different languages. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm glad that just, it just seems to be a lot of enthusiasm to, to, you know, to be outside, to be in the cafes, uh, to be in the, in the restaurants and just kind of running during your daily errands. Okay. And, and this is the time of, um, the annual vacance. I mean, during July and August, are you seeing people, um, from Paris or from the north coming down? Are you seeing mainly the southern um, folks staying put and just really enjoying what they're, you know, they missed for the last year? Yeah, yeah, both, both. Uh, Definitely Parisians, because you can tell by their license plate. Oh, (laughs) you can tell by the last two two digits where people are from in, in France. So the famous 75 is the Parisian. So yeah, I've been seeing those around here. Uh, um, and uh, But the big topic of conversation is where are you going on vacation in August? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Usually the big time of vacation is Bastille Day, so the 14th of July until the 15th of August, kind of that month. 
So where are you going? Uh, do you have to get, you know, have you been vaccinated twice? What kind of paperwork do you need? Or, you know, so that's, we just had a, a big lunch here yesterday, and that was one of the big topics of conversation. And a lot of people are staying, as we did last summer, are just staying in France and discovering, you know, it's a big country and it's a very varied, as you know, Honda, it's a very varied place with you know, different geographies, uh, different foods. You know, you, you drive for two hours and you can be in a, a very different place. So um, so some people, are, a lot of people I know are just staying put and or, go, you know, going to a different part of France that they might not know. I'll kind of answer my question then because I know you often travel to Italy and some of your characters often travel to Italy in your books. Are you able to do that at all or is that even an option? Um, I know you Yes, Italy's it open. Is? Okay, mm-hmm. I didn't know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Since they since they've hit in Europe uh, with COVID, they've kind of been the first country to get back on track with things. I think so. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, if we we drive over the border, if we're stopped, we just need to show vaccination papers. That's what it is. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, so we were just there in May and had a, a very nice week, kind of a road trip, and we brought back wine and olive oil and. All that good stuff. (laughs) Before we get to her big news, I have one sponsor I would like to introduce you to, and then I'll be right back with Mary Lou Longworth. Today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. If there's anything that's interfering with your happiness, BetterHelp is there to help. You can start communicating with a licensed counselor, in under 48 hours, and everything you share is confidential. They have licensed professionals who are specialized in self-esteem, LGBTQ matters, family conflicts, trauma, sleeping, so many areas that you may be wanting to explore. BetterHelp is more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. And the service is available for clients worldwide. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. As a simple, sophisticated listener, you have the opportunity to improve the quality of your everydays. Enjoy 10% off your first month by visiting the sponsor of today's episode, betterhelp.com slash simple, and join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash simple. I want to talk about some very exciting news that when I heard about, I kind of just squealed here in my office when I read it. Your series, your provincial series has now been, they're starting to turn it into a television series. Murder in Provence, I believe, is the the working title. Can you tell us more? Because I am just over the moon. (laughs) Congratulations. Yes. Uh, so, so are we. So are we. Um, my, all my friends and ex keep bugging me if they can be extras. So, uh, um, but we, we get little bits and pieces of news every few weeks. So, yes, it's um, the first ever joint venture between BritBox uh, UK and BritBox USA. Okay. And it's being produced by ITV. And uh, so... And the big news is, I think, for me, it's starring in the role of Antoine Verlac. It's Roger Allen. Yeah. Now, just who was, tell us. Yeah, I, I mean, I remember seeing him in an old Inspector Morris about, you know, 25 years ago, thinking, who is that guy? He is good. <laughs> and we, it, the weird thing is we've kind of followed, my husband and I followed him in his career. He's one of those great character actors. Whenever he's in something, you get really excited. So he was in The Thick of It, which is a spoof of British politics. And most recently, he's in Endeavor, which is the young Morris, kind of the Inspector Morris going back to the 60s and 70s. So, and playing Marine, uh, that we just found out, and I'm very, very pleased, is Nancy Carroll. She had a role in The Crown. I don't, did you see The Crown? Oh, yes. Yes, multiple times. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> How many times? Yeah. <laughs> um, she plays Princess Margaret's a uh, good friend who lives on Mustique Island in the Caribbean. Okay, that's I was I was looking her up for today's conversation. I was trying to get pictures from the the film to kind of remind myself like, who is she. But then I was like, oh, I kind of remember her. I can't, she didn't have a huge role, but she has a significant. No, 
Friends she was in two two episodes, yeah, and then but she's been in a lot of the seasons of Father Brown, which was on ITV as well, I think, and I've never seen it, but it's supposed to be very good. Okay. Well, that is a wonderful cast right out of the gate. Yeah, so it's great. And then um, we're getting little bits and pieces of the, the rest of the cast, and they all have great, great, great CVs. Some of them have been on Sherlock, you know, on uh, stage actors. One of them was in A Very English Scandal with Hugh Grant, which I absolutely loved. So they're starting with the first three books, and I think they've chosen the second book, um, uh, Murder in the, on the Rue du Mass, to begin with. Do you remember, I don't know if you remember that one, it was about the, the students at the theology department in, in, at the university in X. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. I have to yeah. go back and remind myself the whole details, but yes, the students, I remember the students and they, the body was in, was it a professor? Break in professor? to get, to try to cheat on an exam and they find his, his body. Yes. Yeah. That's what it was. I remember that. Oh, that will be a good episode. They don't know the other two novels are going to choose for the for the second. Oh yeah, they do. They, that's the first three, but they're starting with number two. I think because it's a little bit brighter and funnier than the first one. Okay. Uh, so, or you know, I mean, that's my guess. I haven't spoken to them about it, but it will be this. They're starting with the first three, and so each episode will be ninety minutes. So it's an hour and a half. So it's almost you know film length, movie length. It really is. Do you know? So they're they've they've started to to film today. today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay, we're recording this, just everyone knows we're recording this on july 12th oh well where's the champagne way to get your champagne sante I know, congratulations i know yeah uh, <laughs> that's exciting do you, do you get to be on set they're they're, they're 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 coming to x in september so uh you know i'm hoping i can you know, at least watch a few minutes of, of the filming. So we'll see. They started today in England in the English studios. You know, they they do sometimes the interior interiors uh, in England. So got it. Okay. Now, I, I guess I've never I, I've never been able to speak to someone in your situation. So I need to ask these questions just out of curiosity. What is your role? So they've you've optioned your books. Do you are you now just an observer and it's free reign for them? What That's is right. your Okay. That's right. Basically, unless they're very, unless very, very famous. Um, <laughs> Which you're on your when you sell your it. options, they can do whatever they want. Um, I don't know, my agent kind of went through it uh, very, very carefully, went through the contract. And I agreed to do it because I love the producers. It's Alison Owen and Deborah Hayward. Um, and they've set up their own uh, independent production company. But uh, Deborah was with Working Title. So you've probably heard of them. They did Forwardings in a Funeral, Bridget Jones, Notting Hill. So I really like the work that they've done. Alison Owen, uh, she she produced um, Saving Mr. Banks, their first Elizabeth uh, film with Kate Blanchett uh, playing Elizabeth I. I both really, really like their, their films. And so I said, you know, I really, I, I, I trust in these two women. I Screenwriter they got, award-winning screenwriter and playwright, but she also lives half-time in, in Provence. And that was important to me, that there was somebody that knew, you know, how, how things work here in France. So, Yeah, has, uh, that's, that would be important. Well, it sounds like you, you did your homework on them too, and so you can even feel more confident as this moves forward. Uh, last question on this is, do you have idea when this will be available for the view when's it going to be premiering next year in the u.s next year i'm sure yeah i'm told i don't know when yet but 2022 yeah on on brit box so on box okay so we gotta get our subscription brit box which i already have and i watch too much i love it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well that is wonderful again congratulations i know readers and listeners are going to be tickled to hear that um bringing to life. And I do want to talk about your series because your ninth book in the Provincial series that stars Antoine Verlac and Maureen Bonnet, it, it, the last one, we, I had you on the blog and you answered a bunch of detailed questions um, about the book, which is The Vanishing Museum of the Rue Menstrual. Um, you also told us in the comment section uh, that you have a 10th one already on the way. Can you share anything about that one? Sure. Yeah, it's finished and it's in New York and my editor's reading it right now. So June's always kind of a, June, early July is a fun month for me because it's, I'm sort of on vacation because I'm waiting for my editor to read my book. So <laughs> um, so it's it's fun. I get to do uh, stuff that I normally don't get to do. So the, the new one is a working title is Murder Backstage. 
And it's um, it takes place in an amateur theater in X. Um, it's actually a theater where my daughter did ballet class for a while. But mostly, you know, amateur actors, including Jean Marc, who's Marine and uh, Antoine's good friend. He's one of the actors, but there's a famous actress who's come from Paris, who's who's kind of uh, who was he was in her late seventies, early eighties, and she was once very famous, and then um, kind of faded. And, and he's trying to get her fame back by by doing this um, amateur production of a Marcel Peñol play called Sigalon. And Sigalon was a really funny play. Um, and uh, I found actually, uh, if if any of your uh, readers um, speak, understand French uh, on YouTube, of all places, I found uh, the film version from the 1930s that Peñol filmed um, of of the play called Sigalon. And he's a crazy chef who moves from Paris to to a little village, and he refuses to. He loves to cook, but he refuses to cook for his clients. So, <laughs> so he cooks for himself. He's very eccentric, and if you show up, he you know he kind of chases you away. Oh, <laughs> so that's that's, that's, that's what they're putting on. I wanted to, I wanted them to you know be putting on a very very uh, Provencal kind of a play and that way the reader would learn something also about the the play um so anyway one of the cast members dies one maybe two and uh and that's that's basically the the tenth book oh wonderful and that's coming out i think you said in december is that still on on round i think probably next spring next spring okay that's usually okay Oh, wonderful. It sounds like it's going to be fun. And we'll, um, uh, in the show notes, I'll put that link to that YouTube video so people can kind of get a taste of what you're just talking about. No pun, pun in, actually pun intended, pun intended. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I to, of course, I picked a play about food too. So I love, well, I was just going to, you led me right into the next question. I okay. always have to food. Um, currently, what are you, you know, find at the markets that are entertaining your palate and what are you cooking or have been cooking that you've been enjoying? Um, let's see. Well, we just went crazy as we do every spring with the asparagus and strawberries. Remember the last time, you know, as you, I, I, as you have too, I saw, I see on your pictures, your Instagram pictures. Um, and now it's, you know, peaches and tomatoes. Uh, I just found some, the girl in the village, I often go get my fruit and veggies. Uh, in the village is a girl who sells local produce. Uh, she's also very good for local gossip. And, um, <laughs> And she had this beautiful, big purple basil plant. Um, And so I'm not, it's not my favorite herb, I must say. Uh, But the purple one I find, it isn't as strong as the green. And I've been really enjoying just using that, sprinkling that on fresh tomatoes with uh, vinaigrette. Mm. Um, What else uh, have I been making? Uh, Somewhat since it's summertime. Uh, some cold foods, uh, my favorite uh, lentil salad, which actually we had once in a little auberge in the northern part of Provence. And and the uh, chef explained to me how, how to make it. It's quite simple. I just use lentils, either, you know, canned or, or ones that have been soaked a while, boiled. Um, and then I just put them on a cold on a bed of lettuce Ooh. on a big plate. And then uh, drizzle, do, I do a vinaigrette, but with something with walnuts, so either walnut vinegar or walnut oil. Yeah. Um, and and then uh, you know some you know so olive oil vinegar, so lots of mustard, and then I sprinkle that over top. Pour it, pour the sauce over top, and then top it with thin, very thin layers of duck breast. Oh my god! Uh, yeah, I mean, and here we're uh, here in France. You're lucky you can get it already. Uh, it's already cooked and already sliced, and you you can buy it at the grocery store. So it really is simple to make. So then. yeah, and if not, then um, to this kind of the year time of the year, either we do barbecues or I go to the fishmonger. So I really like monkfish, just okay. a really ugly, ugly fish, but very good, very nice big whitey, uh, white meaty fish called lot in France, L O T T E. And so I've been doing. I'll do a ceviche or um, a carpaccio or a carpaccio. So um, you thin it. Uh, you can just roast it very quickly under the grill, and then when it comes out, sprinkle lemon juice and chives on it, and then just kind of very thinly slice it and arrange it on a platter. I got that. I think we talked about this book last time from Patricia Wells's At Home in Provence. Which oh, right. you talked to me about that book many yeah. times. You love. Book I love my books. Uh, it's falling apart. It's falling apart. My book. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, and then t- just to ice cream season here, so we have uh, an ice cream maker, so I'll just kind of get whatever fruits are in the market. Like I said, right now it's peaches. 
and um, we'll do sorbet or ice cream. I mean, by the time I find when I don't know if you find this, by the time you make your own ice cream, by the time you buy, you know, the organic eggs and the really nice thick cream and stuff, it costs probably more than buying a really, you know, a really really good ice cream in the That's shop. True. That's true. Yeah, but it, but it tastes so good, and I get those recipes from a chez panis, a panis, sorry, a dessert book. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah, I pull from um, the, 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 the Alice Waters. Yes, I have a few of her cooking. She's a go-to for that fresh seasonal recipes. Still follow my American and British recipes. Um, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll look up a French recipe uh, online if it's something very specific to, to Provence or something very French. But they just the way their recipes are ordered. Um, it's just a, it's a different organization, and I think when you grow up cooking. You know, as we all did, uh, you know, with your mom or your grandma or whatever, you learned it out your, on your own as soon as you moved out of the house. But you get used to the way the recipes, uh, English recipes are organized. Well, yeah, that's true. And uh, and I don't like the way the French organize their recipes. <laughs> Funny, <laughs> that's fair. If that makes sense. No, it totally so, does. You're still using their ingredients. You're still making things that are seasonal. So you're not, yeah. And so what works for you? That makes sense. Yeah, it's just the way the actual recipe is ordered, you know, with the ingredients first and then... Uh, and then kind of the step-by-step process, that's the kind of recipe I'm used to. So, Well, and then I know people are going to get me to ask this question. What are the French recipes like? What is it that's different? Oh, uh, sometimes I don't put the ingredients first. Um, and sometimes they're a little too vague for me, okay. either in the, in the amounts or in the, um, in the steps. Ah, got it. So they're trusting you more as a cook. Yeah, I, I guess so, which is funny because none of my French friends cook. Uh, my girlfriends don't really cook that much. So I'm well, kind of like, restaurants. You don't have to. Yeah. Well, exactly. And I'm, and also to the generation of women, you know, I'm 58. And so my friends are, you know, we're all the same age. And their moms, you know, were born right after World War II. Uh, or sorry, no, they were born after World War II. Their mothers kind of lived through or were very young during World War II. And so during the 60s, their mothers, you know, kind of you know, threw away the aprons and said, you know, I'm going to go to university, and I'm going to get a job, and I'm not going to cook that, you know, like, <laughs> like my gra- like my mother and grandmother did in, in Burgundy or Brittany. Or, or their mothers um, didn't teach them how to cook. How to cook. Because they were working moms, you know, they went to they went to college, they got jobs, and so you know there are one or two exceptions uh, to that. Some, but on the whole, my my French female friends don't cook. So that absolutely makes sense. I have to really quickly go back to the lentil salad because I'm already salivating only because you have so many different greens, and we do here as well. But I'm curious. What type of greens does he or did he recommend? Or I shouldn't say he knew female chef. Uh, watercress. Or uh, and we have a, a lettuce here called mash. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I started to grow some of that. I'm just getting going on. I love it. But I, that. Thank you for sharing that because a lot of times we hear lettuce, and there's certain lettuces that lend themselves better to different recipes for what we're looking for. And I, that's I think that would be important. That lentil salad sounds amazing and so simple. Thank you for sharing. It's really simple. Yeah. I mean, and if you can't find the sliced duck. Um, I mean, you could save some duck after you've made duck, you know, if you've, if you barbecued some duck breasts or something. Um, but you could probably, I think, um, some uh, Parma ham, you know, or some prosciutto would be very good too. Oh, that's a great substitution. Yeah. Something with, yeah, that's a good idea. I like that. Well, I'll list, maybe list that out on the show notes because I, and then make a simple printout for people so they could have that for themselves if you don't mind. Okay. I no. <laughs> wait a break. Provence to them or, or France to them. All right. You've already kind of shared a few of these already, but I'm going to, as we wrap up today, you, you have shared two previous petit plaisirs that were lovely. So I'm anxious and excited to you for you to share a third one. Um, what is a simple pleasure that you enjoy in your every days? I think um, now, I think I'm really into scents. And I think last time, if you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think I said scented candles. Yes, you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Candles yeah. Are- just um, creams, body creams, hand creams. Um, you know, I'm not a big makeup person, so then I don't feel bad if I want to splurge on a hand cream or a body cream, especially when I'm traveling. In fact, sometimes the, the old pharma, the pharmacies in Italy and in France are like the, from the turn of the century, from 1900, with, this, with the porcelain jars. Oh, the containers, yes, uh, yes. Yes. Yeah, it was one of those. It was in Arezzo. And so I went in just to kind of look at that, and it was all wood-lined, the inside of the pharmacy. And so I went in and then he had, the, of course, the, these beautiful 
hand creams uh, in what looks like a porcelain jar, but I realized it's just kind of pretend porcelain. It's plastic, but it looks like it's porcelain um, with be- with beautiful, beautiful, you know, flowers and and lemons and things like that painted on the outside. And um, so that's I think that's my splurge now, and especially in the summer when your skin gets really dry. At least here, huh? The weather. It's a good idea and not a bad idea just to take care of ourselves. Just a simple little ritual. That's a great idea. Mary, Mary Lou, thank you so much for joining me. I want to remind readers and listeners that Mary Lou is Mary Lou Longworth is the author of the Provincial Mystery Series that now has nine books with the tenth one on the way, as we just spoke about. The most recent title that you can enjoy is The Vanishing Museum on the Rue Menstrual. And if you are new to her series, begin with Death at the Chateau Bremont as an introduction to each of the characters as you begin to follow them through their personal lives as well as solving a mystery in each story. Thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. Thanks so much. Have a good summer. Wasn't that fun? I am just visualizing being in Provence when I'm talking with her. And as I, as I get into my kitchen and make that recipe, which I will have on today's show notes, please visit those for a printout recipe for you can easy, so you can easily take it into your kitchen Visit the simplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 310 for all of those links. Follow her on Instagram, her books. Everything that we talked about will be on there as well. If you haven't stopped by the blog this week, it is French week. It is a sixth annual French week, the busiest week of the year. And there are two posts going live every single day, six giveaways. And if you're not already signed up for the free weekly newsletter, you want to do so because there's going to be a giveaway exclusively for weekly newsletter subscribers. And all giveaways will be announced on Sunday, August 15th, as we wrap up. I do hope you are enjoying this week if you have stopped by. And if you haven't tuned into episode 309, please do. I'll take you to Paris with the founder of Paris Perfect Vacation Rentals, Madeline Byrne. I'm so glad you joined us today. Wishing you a wonderful rest of your day. Season eight kicks off on the first Monday of September. I'll be revealing the schedule for season eight at the end of August. Enjoy the rest of this month. And I'll be back Monday, September 4th to kick off a brand new season of The Simple Sophisticate. Bonjour.